Okay, good morning, everybody. I'd like to call to order the regular board workshop meeting for February 20th, 2024, here at 9.30 a.m. in Marks Hall. Russell, would you lead us in the invocation and Pledge of Allegiance, please? Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, and we wish that you'd be here to be with us as we conduct business for Trailer Estates. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, can we have a roll call, please? Sure. Lori Dalton here. Donnie Deerwester. Present. Kathy Gregory. Present. Todd Lombardi. Present. Russell McAllister. Present. Lewis Nichols. Present. Cindy O'Brien. On Zoom or no? Anybody on Zoom? Okay. Rod Smith? Present. Dwayne Trotter? Present. Lee Morris? Present. Okay, I'd like to have uh, public comment, and you know, it's limited to three minutes on the uh, agenda, workshop agenda items only. Do I have anybody on Zoom that would like to make a public comment? Hearing none, I want to close public comments, and we'll jump right into the uh, report from the Standing Committee, the Treasure Barn. Farm Zool, 6608 Dakota Street. Um, our balance before was $36,709.92. And now with our last sales, it's $40,211.92. And I just wanted to say thank you to, uh, to for getting my um, batteries, or our batteries fixed and stuff. Great. That's, a, that's about all. Thank you. Okay, we'll jump into the clubs and organizations. Do I have a video on Zoom? No. Hearing none, I'm going to close uh, clubs and organizations. We'll jump right into the workshop agenda items. Uh, are there any items that need to be added? If not, we'll take the first one, which is the 2024-2025 uh, budget. Uh, discuss the capital outlay items. Lou? Yep. So, uh, at least prepare a handout for everybody. And uh, talks about what we all, all we accomplished in the last year, which was a lot. And, Lee, do you want to go ahead and do the presentation? That would be great. Okay. Uh, William is... Uh, can you put that up on the uh, monitor for us, please? you mind if I... Uh... Go right ahead. Um... So again, I want to remind everybody, this is preliminary. It's not set in stone. Uh, this will uh, all come together uh, once we uh, uh, get to the uh, finalization of the budget uh, prior to the public hearing. Um, this is for capital outlay. And uh, we're in a little bit of a uh, 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 a little bit of a zone that we, we we have to make sure we don't put the cart before the horse. Uh, and uh, reason being, if you go to the next uh, page, please. Um, let's let's real quickly go through what we've accomplished. The ADA lift to the pool is in. The ADA lift to the spa. The elevator. So the pool deck will be here sometime in the next uh, week and a half, just waiting on one part. The north boundary fence is complete. The FOB system is relatively complete. I'll talk more about that during my park manager report uh, today. Uh, the maintenance building set up and moved. We're going to address that today with uh, the uh, decking uh, for the marina docks. It's kind of one has to go before the other. Uh, we've replaced the maintenance golf cart fleet with uh, all new carts. Um, the TV monitors, we're just waiting on the uh, internet drops and we'll go out and purchase the uh, monitors going in at the post office area, at the activity center and in the breezeway right here in front of the office. The large hall installation uh, is something that we brought up before the board, I believe a couple of meetings ago. It'll probably go in uh, during the summertime. 
the large hall refurbishment that the Treasure Barn so graciously uh, helped us with uh, financially is, uh, is complete. The new stage curtains are installed as of last Friday, and they look great if, any, if everyone's seen them. Uh, and thank you again to the Treasure Barn. Thank you for the uh, generous donation and paying for those. Uh, and then prior to my getting here, I believe that we did some banquet tables uh, a purchase. Mm -hmm. Next slide, please. Lee, Lee, I have nope. a question before we move on. Go ahead. Do you have a total number of what these items cost us in the 2023-2024 year? Uh, yes. Just not with me. Okay. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Yeah, I mean, it'd be interesting to see and see where the money came from. Mm -hmm. Well, the money, all these all money all came from capital outlay. Right. Yeah. The budget. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. Our capital outlay budget for this fiscal year, 23-24, was $327,500. Mm -hmm. So it was significant, and it had to be, if you can go back real quickly, Bill, it had to be fairly significant because the, next slide, oh, there you go. The uh, the ADA project here was eighty some odd thousand yeah. dollars. The north boundary fence was almost ninety thousand. So right there of that budget, it's one hundred and seventy grand uh, right there. The FOB system was fifty eight thousand. So we're not talking about small projects in this whole thing. And uh, so that that money uh, that was budgeted for capital outlay. It uh, has been put to uh, put to use. Next slide, please. So the um, this is where the caveat comes in. We're in the process of going through a master planning process, and uh, on the agenda, uh, on the board agenda, uh, is uh, for the board meeting is to re receive and place on file the two uh, proposals that we received after the. Uh, uh, bid process, and uh, what we'll do is we'll vet them and then come back to the board and we'll allow the vendors to make a presentation, and there's a scoring system uh, that will be, you know, based on that for the board to choose. Once that, if, if they choose, then there'll be a, 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 a vote of the board if they want to move forward with that, with that group that scores the highest. But the capital outlay process, um, there we go so i had to put a couple of caveats in here if a master plan vendor is adopted by the board many capital outlay uh, items may be subject to change in scope and cost if the master plan vendor is not selected we'll have to reestablish capital outlay items for next budget year or for the following budget year 25 26 and then there may be grants and loans available to offset some of the items with a master plan vendor and then any items uh, past the 24, 25 column are not funded. Well, why no grants or loans if it's not a master plan vendor? Because they're going to have to have a grant writer that uh, can identify where these grant monies are coming from. At this point in time, we're not seeing any grants available to us. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you. So here's what we're proposing for the 24, 25 uh, capital outlay. Um, and we're a little bit over budget. We're estimating somewhere around 275,000 for capital outlay right now. So we have to work on this a little bit, but the pool area would, would get a tiki hut uh, shade structure put up in the, uh, on the, on the one side to provide a little bit of shade uh, for our uh, sunbathers. The uh, bathrooms would get refurbished in the large hall the uh, men's and ladies' bathroom uh, off the side of the hall. Um, the uh, we're we're talking about an east side boundary fence to uh, separate the uh, commercial from the uh, residential in in trailer estates. Um, and Todd's going to have his hands full on that one uh, because it's a pretty involved project. But we're confident that you can pull it off. <laughs> Uh, the master plan project, we were budgeting $75,000 to choose a vendor there. 
new signage for all the buildings and the Bay Drive sign at the corner there. Um, we need to uh, look at our signage. A couple of different reasons. Emergency vehicles uh, are not able to identify our buildings. Mm -hmm. And if there's a if there's a 911 call and they say, well, come over to the the uh, the activity center, mm -hmm. they're really not going to know where that is. Mm -hmm. The only building that is that is labeled properly in Trailer Estates is the guy right there, Bill's Woodshop Building, actually <laughs> has the proper signage. <laughs> so thank you for that, sir. Um, also, our, our signage projects our image for Trailer Estates. And we want to, uh, we, we need to get past the hand carved Trailer Estates sign on our corner here and reflect that Trailer Estates is moving into the you know 21st century. So uh, we need to address that. Uh, so all those items, and then right here, I just put in there for future from the master plan, we're looking at uh, how to develop pickleball courts, developing a 10 property, repurposing the old maintenance building, redeveloping the post office, and refurbishing the beach area. Uh, so we push those out to what they possibly could cost just so we have an idea of what we're looking at. And then we also put in the pool bathrooms uh, to refurbish those in the following budget year of 80,000, not funded. And then the Wi-Fi project uh, to strengthen all of our Wi-Fi, which we're, we're seeing if we can't work out uh, this year at very little cost, but we looked at it uh, for a capital outlay in, in 25, 26. So that's, that's kind of where we are in, in our, this column being our proposed, and we still have to get that pricing down a little bit, so we need to sharpen our, our pencil here. Um, I believe that there's one more slide. This just explains uh, the, uh, the project. Tiki Hut's uh, shade structure is an authentic Tiki Hut, which is a thatched roof to create a shaded area. Pool bathrooms replace tile on the walls, make ADA friendly and reconfigure layout. Um, the bathrooms for the large hall replace wall tile, refinish terrazzo floor, replace partitions. The Wi-Fi, strengthen Wi-Fi signal and increase speed. Uh, east side boundary fence, explore the possibility of the county allowing us to add a fence line in that area. Uh, the challenge there will be the bushes that are, are in there and, and where the trailer estates boundary is and the county uh, boundary is also. Master plan project is to choose from two ven vendors, need a positive board vote to move forward. And then new signage for buildings on uh, and Bay Drive, identify all buildings for emergency services, replace Bay Drive office sign. So that's what we have uh, at least right now planned uh, for uh, capital outlay. We believe our budget is going to be anywhere between two hundred fifty and uh, two hundred seventy-five thousand dollars, pending finalization uh, from the treasurer uh, when we propose to the rest of the board. Are there any questions or any anything that you would like to add or prioritize or anything that we've missed uh, for uh, capital outlay for next year? Well, if you're asking for priorities, I think the east side fence is one of the most valuable things in this pro this proposal. Truly really agree with that. I, I agree. The, the problem that I see with it is I don't believe you can hit a fence far enough off the road that it's not going to get tore up. Mm -hmm. That's what you've got to look at. But you basically, you'd have to put a fence clear back right at where the, where the, the lift comes up from the uh, canal that's there, basically. You know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. And then, mm -hmm. because, I mean, if you look now, I mean, you you got less than two foot at a lot of places <laughs> off the road. And every time a track trucks come around there, they swing and hit that, and it's going to just trash it. Unless unless we can push it back for at least four feet off, I don't think it's doable. It's it's also fire trucks then. Yes, then. but well, the trash trucks the one that's in here every every week, and they seem to be right. the ones that tend to hit our right. back fence. Right, but still, fire fire trucks are a, a knockdown drag out issue too. Yes, they're they're even no worse. doubt they're even longer and bigger than the no doubt. Yeah. Hey. You're proposing to put this fence on the county property. Yeah, well, you got to make sure county's going to allow it, just like they did yeah. with the back. They wrote us a letter allowing it. 
So what we think right now, really, there's a lot of other things. Correct. There's a lot of things that have to be looked at yeah. before we can even you know, proceed. But I, but I want to make sure that the board is aware that uh, I've been here nine months. The North Bend's installation and people asking us by calls to my office to put in another fence and to consider that has been the most calls that, that I've gotten by far. I, I can't agree more that it's something that is, I think is it, very, very useful. Right. But on the other hand, there are challenges. And sure. we have to look at possibly taking out the vegetation, which would increase the costs, but it would move the fence to where it needs to be. From what I went, at least, at least going up and down there, if we took out a lot of that vegetation, we could push that fence back far enough. I think so. Um, I'd, I'd have to look and, and see for sure, but I think your numbers also weigh light. Because I agree. I agree. It's, uh, I mean, you're going to have, I bet you got probably 25 grand just in vegetation removal. So would it behoove us then to adjust that, uh, that fund, that cost, and then reduce something else? And uh... Let's let's look at it and try to get a number. Right. I, I, we've got a little bit of time on this yet. So let me, let me try to get a, yeah. at least a, a ballpark number and whether the county will even allow it. I, I actually believe that uh, uh, since the north fence went in and it went uh, and abutted to private property, essentially, uh, that and this abuts to commercial property for the most part, correct? That the county probably already set precedent by giving us the permission to put the fence on county property on the north side. I believe I believe getting permission from the county will be minimal problem. I think that that they will allow that without any. Okay. Um, I mean, the biggest thing on it is making sure that it doesn't uh, block water flow and and things like that. Mm -hmm. so. Understood. Real small in with the signage stuff, and maybe we could do it sooner rather than with this budget. Is the nine one one call boxes? If they don't have an address right underneath the call box, there's a problem with trying to tell EOC where to, you know. When when you push the button, the address automatically pops up for them. Does it? Yes. Okay. So the reason all. the reason that we know that we've been working on the nine one one call boxes right. and perfect. Past all right, I will let the people who have talked well, with me about that. They still ask you just to yeah. confirm, but mm -hmm. yeah, Pre it Trustee does Dalton, I I do believe though that what we should do is once. Uh, once we're finished with working on them, that we probably should put a uh, label with the address where the box is located. I, yes, okay. I, I, I agree. That would be, so yes, you're, you're absolutely right. That, that would be a comfort level for the residents. Right. Still entertain any comments? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. um, I also am very much in favor of the master plan project. And I question... Um, if we want to do the work to the restroom refurbishments and stuff before we do the master plan and specifically the pool, because, you know, there's been discussion about the pool buildings uh, integrity. Mm -hmm. And I wonder how much we want to invest in it, you know, until we know what its future is. So the pool, the pool bathroom, uh, we're in the following fiscal year. They weren't in, they're not in this, okay. but I, I agree with you. We have to, ascertain if, if there's structural problems mm -hmm. prior to embarking on a project like that. Mm -hmm. And there is separation at some of the uh, door frames. Mm -hmm. uh, correct? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So, what's, um, you know, one th thing that we mentioned from time to time, and then it, we, we mention it and then we don't really go any farther is at some point, do we need to do an evaluation of our pool? Or, I mean, how, how old is the pool now? It's old. Yep. And it's only limited to 41 people. Mm -hmm. Capacity. I, I do think that, that one of the things that we put into the master plan is for them to evaluate the pool, right. its size for the community, and its location, mm -hmm. and its condition. Mm -hmm. Is one of the uh, criteria. Okay. I end up with a second. You never know. Let's let's let the master plan play out. Mm -hmm. See what happens. And well, and, and I will yeah. tell you that there is uh, Holiday Park does have uh, a pool on uh, either side of they they have they have separate sides with a major street dissecting it, mm -hmm. and they have pools on both sides mm -hmm. and community center on both sides. And mm -hmm. there there were some more to our layout. 
Does it work for him? Uh, it, it has up until uh, Ian. <laughs> well, uh, that's, it, yep. that's interesting. I have a hard time picturing it because the pool is kind of the focal point of the park, really, for social I mean, gathering, it seems like. With, but, with the division, it'd be just the same. Uh, I want to say it's just the same as the, the south side versus the yeah, north side indeed. here. The uh, Ken property would have a, mm. uh, a community center as well as the pool. Right. And then the south side, it, it works out nice for them, mm -hmm. with with the exception of the hurricane that yeah. tore up one of them. Yeah. Yeah, they're still not they're still not operational on one of the uh, pools or community centers. On I just don't remember which one. So mm -hmm. again, these are these are not written in stone. And uh, as we as we sharpen our pencil and figure out what's what the numbers are, mm -hmm. we'll we'll represent this back to you in a couple of meetings once we get everything uh, laid out and get a final number of what we do have available yeah. for capital help. One one thing to add too is. When we did the survey a while back, the, the top item asked for out of that survey was a pup pup golf. So that's another thing to think about. Thank you. And can I ask a question? Um, at the last Treasure Barn meeting, um, it was asked about their next um, project to fund. And so um, last year they graciously helped to go the, to finish the large home and the curtains. Mm -hmm. So um, would this be the list that they would use to select a project that they would support in some way? I mean, uh, I don't. I would prefer no. to sit down with the treasure barn and get some ideas of what they may okay. like, other than what's on this okay. list here. And that's fine. You know, it was suggested that possibly to help with finishing the large hall and way of, of, of the insulation. Mm -hmm. So it's just some things to think about. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I'm just kind of relaying the information back yeah. to the board. We'll have we'll have a discussion, Barb. Does the uh, the shade structure for the pool include an expansion of the deck? Yeah, so I think that's a little light for that. I, too. I, I, I did. Think, get, yeah, I, I didn't include a, uh, an extension on the deck. So I did have it quoted. Um, that was one of the first things I, I quoted when I <laughs> took mm -hmm. this position, and about forty five was uh, for a sixteen by sixty. Um, picky structure off the off the back side of the pool or the, the storage lot side, but it did not include a deck on top of there. So you'd have another probably fifteen grand on top of there for a deck to do that. Too. Are you thinking about cantilevering a deck off of that or or pouring putting, putting, public, putting posts in and elevating it to the level? And we we're going to mm -hmm. call. I thought we were coming off the south south end of the pool. I, I looked at both. It was about the same cost. I just okay. the way I set it up was off that other side because it gave us more room to to do things. I wasn't aware that it was going off the storage lot side. I put it off the the back end. It doesn't. It, either or, we, that's all can be discussed later. Okay. But I just okay. had it quoted the one way. Okay. And this this would be for a, an authentic. Uh, that's what I had quoted. Seminole uh, built mm -hmm. uh, thatched roof structure. Um, it's surprising how well these things hold up in in high winds and and uh, um, so, anyways. All right. They they do have about a ten year life on the replacement of it, so they do. keep that in mind also when we get to that point. I think it would. I think it would get a lot of use. <laughs> oh, I think it would too. I, I I I totally agree with it. But just looking at the list, I see. Uh, from all the calls that I get from the uh, homeowners and stuff, it looks like uh, the Tiki Hut I've received a bunch. Uh, of course, the ADA bathrooms. Uh, we've always received requests for the uh, uh, Wi-Fi, and of course, the master plan for the um, and property, the box yeah, the <laughs> shuffleboard. Mm -hmm. So I think we're pretty much hitting everything that the residents have been asking for.
Okay, any other discussion? And then, uh, is this on the website? It is. Yes. Okay. Thank you for that. And are you going to be entertaining any comments from the residents through emails? Absolutely. Okay. Okay. Oh, uh, next item we have then is the uh, office assistant, the hourly rate adjustment. <clears throat> Mr. Morris. Uh, our office assistant, Kristen Olson, was hired in September uh, of uh, 23, and uh, she quickly established herself. Uh, as being a valuable addition to our office, uh, catching on to what happens at the uh, window, which is not easy since we basically had one other person prior to her leave our employee because it was just too much to handle. Uh, but there's there's a lot of things to learn. And I actually uh, have seen her you know, work things out and is fair and consistent, which is important. Uh, and uh, help many residents uh, in, in solving their issues, and especially when they get a little bit uh, sticky. The issue is, is that she missed the 3% increase uh, because she was still under uh, probation. So in, in essence, even though the increase of uh, 250 an hour looks high, but it would actually, her 3% uh, would have been around 70 cents an hour. So the actual increase we're asking for in addition to the 3%, is about a dollar seventy-five. Um, we added to her duties after we hired her. That's the key thing here that we need to look at. And what we added to her duties is that she is now in charge of payroll because we removed payroll from an outside vendor uh, that saved us in excess of five thousand dollars a year uh, to go in-house uh, through QuickBooks, and she has. Uh, entered everybody in and has uh, worked very diligently in getting it started and uh, work, worked uh, very well with uh, our treasurer in, in getting it uh, moving forward. And since the beginning of the year, we have uh, we've been paying everybody internally through through QuickBooks mm -hmm. and uh, we've had a we've had a minimal amount of problems. I think we've had one issue that we've been able to solve. Um, I, I strongly support. So do I. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. And then the other thing I want to bring up just before, and I, I, I'm just trying to to, uh, to tout uh, Kristen's abilities, is that she totally took over 732. Mm -hmm. And we were looking for a way to, to make 732 look better. And it certainly helped that we we increased the, the, uh, resolution. the resolution. But she was able to pick up Canva, which is a graphics program, mm -hmm. and then entered everything through Canva and has really uh, takes care of 732 for us and has really taken taken it out of um, you know that responsibility away from uh, from uh, the maintenance uh, manager who was always mm -hmm. taking time out during his day to update slides and she does that. And uh, also our maintenance trustee was doing a lot of that work too. And we appreciate the fact that she's uh, embraced that. So I think this is just as much as we want to make sure that we retain her, but we also need to uh, make sure we're paying her uh, a prevailing wage that uh, is, uh, is uh, reflects her duties. Isn't she also in instru instrumental in working with the Tribune? Oh, okay. she is, okay. she has taken over the Tribune completely. Uh, also, mm -hmm. uh, that was one part of her duty uh, was to assist with it, but she has actually taken it over. And I don't, I, I, I want to tell you that the tribunes never look better. Sure. And uh, with timely, a lot of good comments. Yeah, on with a lot of uh, good uh, information. And there's probably very little in here that uh, uh, is the same as it was when uh, when she got here. So I think she does a good job with that. Mm -hmm. So I'm asking, uh, we're asking uh, to increase her uh, her pay. Uh, it's approximately a value of $2,800 uh, per per year. Um, and I, I I added just just a loan with a payroll clerk or a specialist makes uh, in uh, in an hourly rate in uh, Sarasota uh, was the best I could get uh, data for. And I think we're uh, 
we would be we we would be at least close to where uh, where where she needs to be. So this is a merit increase. I want to make sure that we understand that, and uh, uh, we'll go from there. And uh, I thank you for for hearing us out. Okay. Any other discussion? Yeah, I, I second Lee. When oh, yeah. when we brought the 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 payroll in house. Kristen was a little hesitant. She's like, hey, this isn't exactly what I signed up for. But once she committed to do it, man, she'd latch onto it hard and, and was very diligent about it. Great. Mm -hmm. It is great. A couple of comments. I went back to, I'm not disagreeing that she's doing great work because the Tribune looks great. The slides look great. People are making comments about the improvements we've made. She's instrumental behind that. However, the... Mm -hmm. <clears throat> maybe the position description needs to be changed or modified or updated to include the kinds of duties because I think we we get into a uh, slippery slope when positions are, uh, salaries are increased based on personalities, not position. And I don't think this is based on personality, it's based on position. Yep. And yet it's not, you know, we use people's names. When we talk about personnel, I'm always, I'm personally opposed to using names. It's the office assistant or the whatever the title is because it takes personalities out of that. The merit increase, uh, first of all, I looked, in fact, I looked in the policies and I didn't see anything in there about salary increase at the end of a positive probationary period. Maybe I missed it, but I think it should be in there because I think this is part of what the increase is about. Yeah. It's not only the more the additional work, but it's also based on the fact that she completed successfully her probationary period. And I think that should be included in our personnel handbook because then that's an opportunity to increase at whatever rate that increase is made. Um, I'm not sure how to address that, but I wanted to bring that part up. But that's a good point. Now I'll, I'll jump into that. Um, because I did the handbook and stuff, but you're correct, it's not in there for a probationary increase after that. So I'll take a look at that. And Maybe something we should consider, yep. because I think that part of the intent of probationary period is that the individual proves they can do the job, whatever the job is. And that can change. This one obviously changed quite a bit from when she was hired. I couldn't find a copy of the actual position description. And so maybe that's something to look at to add um, those kinds of things in the position description so that she knows what she's being evaluated on when the annual evaluation is being done. Those things kind of tie hand in hand. And um, merit increase, how do you define merit increase? Is that in the handbook as to what that is? No. Okay, so that's I, another well, term. I understand what it means. I but, do believe that uh, as we, you know, the the chair has expressed uh, that he'd like to work together with the park manager in, in updating some of those items in the employee handbook. And there's a couple things that one of them that you had brought up is the uh, is a uh, as an increase after uh, probation. And you brought up a lot of good points, but there's a few other things that we need to address in the handbook that needs to be updated yeah. also to reflect. So we'll, we're going to bring that before the board fairly soon once we get uh, some time out of budget, hopefully, and get into uh, a few things that we, uh, we've we identified over the past uh, while that we need to update in that. In my, in my experience, merit increases happen when the annual evaluation is done, yeah. not in the middle of the year. And um, again, I'm not disputing the need for the increase. Um, I'm just raising some issues based on my experience with personnel. Um, so I'm not sure if there's really a merit increase. It's going to be called whatever it's called at this moment, because we don't have that definition in the personnel handbook. I don't think that salaries should be increased because somebody missed a percentage increase. That's, that's just the way it happens. And then at, at the end of the year, when the evaluation is done, then the percent, I mean, they fall in line. You don't backtrack and, and retroactive something that's happened before a person was eligible for that. And I think we don't want to get into that mode. 
So I just wanted to make those comments. That's your points well taken. That, that it, it's it, and I don't know the definitions. I'm not a labor expert, but I, I, I agree. It isn't like here's this pile of work you had. You did this better than we expected. That's a merit increase, but I think if we've had enhanced our responsibilities, and maybe that's maybe this is not the right term. I don't know, but but uh, I mean, well think, taken. Yeah, yeah maybe so merit not, might have spoken out of turn. Spoken out of term, but the, the increase of the workload that we have added mm -hmm. to yeah. our original position description is well warranted. Yeah. And, and the work, uh, anyone who has done payroll, it's a lot of work, yeah. and. Uh, in fact, a lot of organizations this size have a payroll clerk mm -hmm. that is a staff person, and that's what mm -hmm. they do. You know, we may eventually get to that point. And so the I would recommend that with with everything happening today or recommending for the meeting that the position description be updated to include mm -hmm. these various uh, duties. And maybe the title is a misnomer. Maybe it's not an office assistant anymore. So I look at that as something different. I mean, it's a fine title. They still work, but I'm not suggesting to change it. But I would at least include the duties in the current position description. Update that. I'll take a look at it. Okay. Um, something Anything you else? think about doing as a as an office assistant level one, level two, so that if you bring in a new office assistant, you're not necessarily expecting them to perform at the level she is right now. I don't know. Yeah, that's a good idea. That was some that was something we did at the bank is you had level one, level two, and the and the the level two did what level one did, but they had more they had additional duties. Right. Just thought that's not uncommon at all. Okay. Uh the next item we have is the marina dock service surface. And this is going to be playing into a, into the master plan and moving the um, old maintenance building down to the new uh, building. But uh, to get there, uh, the dock needs to be resurfaced, and it was outside of the scope of the uh, uh, the marina seawall. Uh, yeah. I'm sorry, the seawall. But we've received uh, three bids, and I think they're included here in the agenda. Mm -hmm. uh, the lowest bid was uh, 22.5, and then we're going to be providing a dumpster for that. But we have all the materials on hand that is taking up all the space down the base, so I can't move anything from point A to point B until we get this uh, marina dock or marina slips uh, resurfaced. Um, it, as you can tell, I think the bids went from 22.5 all the way up to mm -hmm. 80, right? What was the other? 89. The other, the other part it was, was crazy. Was, yeah. I believe, I also believe we're going to be short on the, the Trex material. We are going to end up having to buy more of that. Oh, and then the clips also, we'll have to buy more of those. So we are short some on those. I'm going to guess another, say, $4,000 on top of this materials. Okay. How did we end up with all the material if we hadn't? We we approved to replace them a long time ago. A long time ago. Mm -hmm. Maintenance guy's been okay, working okay. on them. Little here, little there. But it's just, it's gotten to the point, especially with season, we can't even get back to them. Okay. So get it done. Get it. The, the one dock is getting to the point where it's really bad. It's It's got to happen here pretty soon. Um, or somebody's going to fall through it. <laughs> so uh, with the bids, though, uh, there's one thing that I want to check. Um, you want to go ahead and put out a disclaimer on this thing till so I can actually get a, an answer. Yeah, Mr. Chair. Well, um, first of all, I want to make sure that everyone understands the scope of work is 180 foot of main dock be resurfaced mm -hmm. and then 20 finger docks, each one of them being 22 foot in length. So it's a fairly big job. Um, I want, in, in going through the bids, um, I noticed that the uh, low bid uh, is, I, I want to just alert you that there is a uh, familial relationship with one of our workers that uh, this is a, uh, is related to one of our uh, maintenance workers, this uh, shore interior solutions. However, 
they had no input into uh, into the selection process, nor on uh, will they uh, be uh, supervising uh, the project uh, in itself. But I wanted just to, for full disclosure, I wanted to make sure that the board is aware that Shore Interior Solutions, uh, the owner is 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 the son of one of our maintenance workers. He is uh, son-in-law. Son-in-law, sorry. But in, in full disclosure, he does not have, there's, there's a little bit different uh, if there was a related relation to a trustee, right. and that's not the case here. Mm -hmm. The person is not an elected official. So, uh, but we have asked for some uh, clarification for, from our, uh, our uh, district council. His uh, initial reaction was that uh, as long as we, we disclose it, there, there shouldn't be a problem. But uh, uh, after award, uh, we're going to take a deeper dive into this and make sure that everything is on the up and up. I have a question. In one of the estimates, they estimated that when they took the boards off, they were going to have to do some reinforcements. This is also included in this. Um, okay. They do have to do reinforcements. The current decking has to have um, two-foot spacing, but the, the new decking going down has to have 16-inch spacings okay. in between. We're actually going with 12-inch spacings the way we're doing so do we have to provide the lumber? We're, we're providing the material. Yeah, it's already bought. And that's why I say, it's, it's, well, it's majority of us already bought. Majority. A lot of it got used whenever they did the seawall. And they were, you know, that whole other deck at the end yeah. of the marina out there, mm -hmm. that was taken out. That'll have to be replaced to go back to this, plus the, the little bit of deck that they put down in the front. So I, I would guess another probably, just to be safe, save, save $4,000 over this number would need to be added to this. To be approved mr chair may i have one one last thing sure um i want i want to make sure that the trustees understand that the materials that uh for this uh redecking are in the middle bay of the fire barn right so that's preventing us from completing the move from the old maintenance building into the into the fire barn so it's kind of a you know getting this done Getting A done, then get and then B can happen. So I just want to make sure we're aware of that. And then C and D and E. And then, yeah, so on and so forth. Um, if I can ask a question, maybe this is just, um, this is this is not my expertise at all. There's a huge variance in in estimates. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And can somebody explain that? How come we go from this to this? Is it because of, of the company's expertise? It's it's the way they wanted to go about doing it. I see. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. So the, the bottom line is um, a couple of companies were really kind of going over the top on how they wanted to do it. I see. And that's what, you know, way they insisted it needed to be done. Okay. So that's it. Basically. Okay. And some companies just don't want the bid and they just right. jack the price up. Right. I that's see. what I was thinking that Thank one you. was. Thank you very much. When the project is started, regardless of who starts it, how long will it take, and and what happens when uh, the fingers are the where the boats are docked, right? So people won't be able to get to their boat for a period of time. It, it's done. It it's we're, we're, the way we're doing it right now. We're doing it in small sections, so it really doesn't hinder for very at any length of time um, getting out there. The finger docks, um, I mean, those are done in, in less than a day. I was just gonna say you can do a finger dock in oh, yeah. a day, I would think. And the, and the main dock would be done in you know. Four to six foot seconds. sections going out, so it, it won't hinder it really bad. And it was Duncan Seawall that did our seawall work. Am I correct? No, no. no. Board of structural. No. Yep. Yep. Board of structural. Duncan's right. doing a few of the repairs out okay. right there. That would be any, the next repair. Is there any um, expectation that any of the pylons are going to have to be replaced to hold the docks up? Or are they um, in good condition? Best we can tell right now, they all look pretty decent. Um, there's there's definitely a couple of them that are getting some wear, and we've been replacing them a little here, a little there. Another one got pulled out in that uh, last storm we had. Duncan's coming in end of next week to replace mm -hmm. that one and repair that dock. As, as we find them, then we have them fix them. Matter of fact, when they fixed the dock the last time, there was two other pilings I had them <laughs> had them reset. Basically, the pilings were fine. They just were pulled out of the mud. Now the insurance company is covering the ones they're coming back to do. Correct. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Any other discussion? Mm -hmm. 
So I should amend my motion when I get to it. Um, yeah. Holy cow. Yeah, because it's not a motion yet. <laughs> yeah, I'm just playing on the already. Okay, <laughs> let's jump on into the informational reports from the trustees. Um, Dottie, would you start it, please? Okay, mine, mine is quick here. So last Saturday, we had the coffee break at uh, three different clubs come in and talk about what they do with the club. And then we had an interactive discussion with the group. People brought up different events that were coming up uh, um, within the park. I think it was very successful. We had about 60 people attend. And um, there are still people that don't know that there's not a cost to it. Come to the door and where's my ticket kind of thing. But uh, I think that it's proving to be successful. One of the suggestions that was made by somebody in the audience was whether we could ask uh, trustees to come, just to come, and then if they have any questions for them, introduce, introduce them, basically. Um, and then that's, first, that's totally up to the trustee. But I think it is an opportunity for the residents, especially the newer ones, to get to know who the trustees are. So that's going to be something I'm going to be bringing up next season. And then because we only have one more coffee break then next season. And I think that's a nice opportunity if trustees choose to do that. We will have the potluck tonight at five o'clock in the large hall. And that's always a good event, good food and good camaraderie. So I encourage everyone to come. Thank you. Uh, on the... Um... Trustees. Trustees doing the uh, introductions and that stuff. Uh, I do have one concern there. Just remember that you are a trustee, but you have nine trustees on the board. And whatever you're saying could be a violation of the Sunshine Law because you have to vote on it. So I would want to be very careful with that. Yeah. And if we have more than one trustee attend, then we step out. <clears throat> something like that. Yeah, yes. going to be one trustee there, right? Well, yeah, but I'm <laughs> second step up. But I'm saying it's more than one. Um, so, yes. And, and that's at 9 o'clock in the morning? Yes. That's before <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my. No problem. <laughs> For you, I have For you, 9.05. Can I do 10? <laughs> okay, anything else? No. Thank you. Rod? Hey, um, Lee and I rode around uh, Wednesday, and uh, we ended up writing up uh, six or seven violations, and one was a third violation. Um, the thing uh, we're seeing more of is, besides the lawn maintenance aspect, we're seeing trailers that need power washed or painted. Uh, so we we people need to, to be aware of that. Um, we've also had some pet issues brought up. Uh, concerning pets not on leash. Um, the Manatee County Animal Ordinance 22-16 section is concerning dogs and cats running loose and states the rules concerning pets in the county. Uh, in the March Tribune, uh, Lee has written a, a comment on, the, uh, on his notes, and also back in there is a definition of 2216 as far as what's an at-large animal and what's a direct control. So, and, and there is a fine that could be levied if you were uh, identified as having a pet off leash outside of your property. Um, so, so be aware of that. Um, and also reminder to those of you that have pets outside of the pet section. Those pets need to be registered as emotional support, and you need to go and, and look at the instructions on PP40 to see what those rules are. It's not a challenge to do it. You basically need a, a letter from your doctor saying the need for the emotional support, and you have to have the vaccines and, and the county tag. And my experience is when you get your animal vaccinated, you get the uh, license from the county. So... It's not a, a big issue, but uh, there is a fine involved if if we discover that you're not uh, that your pet's not registered. So follow up on that. Uh, make sure we're 
finding generally things in pretty good shape, but uh, we're, we have more time, so we're keeping a little, little closer eye on some things. And some people we even get ahead of complaints on that we issue our violations before, <laughs> before the complaint comes in. <laughs> so uh, we are on the ball on stuff. Okay, that's it. Great. Thank you, Russell. I'm glad I'm glad he's in front of me. I love this. Thank you, Rod. Uh so she's out a little bit. You yeah, don't talk as much. No kidding. <laughs> Ruin that. Uh thank you for the complaint and, and filling out a form <clears throat> for that issue. Uh, we do we do have a number of properties with violations. We got eleven at this time. We have a total of twenty violations outstanding. We are at this point with uh, one violation for a third time. Um, this week we will be writing up another one. So we will have more uh, third time violations um, for, the, for, for the finding committee if those fines aren't paid. Um, it is looking nice. I congratulate everybody who is taking care of their property. It's nice to see people starting to feel like they should do something to make the place look good to live here. Um, if anybody has any questions about the, file, the violation summary, it is on the website under the agenda, and you can look up all of these properties that are being that we're talking about, and especially the rules that uh, Rod just went over and everything that is on the website that we have that written down. So if you have any questions, you know, call either one of us or leave us a message here in the office. And uh, the day that we do come in, since things are getting easier, uh, we'll check those messages and get back to you. As long as it's not a complaint from a trustee, I guess we uh, we can take our time on that. But thank you. Oh, low ball. Man. <laughs> Let's get rough over here. Your turn. <laughs> thank you. And good morning, everybody. Thanks for coming. Um, since the February 6th board meeting, we've had a few events. So here's the recap. Our first trivia game night was on Thursday, February 8th. We had 74 residents playing, which I thought was wonderful for the first time. We had 19 teams register. Um, it was fun. It was a fun night. Um, I want to thank uh, Mary Lou for doing the refreshments and a huge shout out to Christine, who was the MC and all things that night. We had 40 questions plus a bonus round. Um, the teams decorated their tables. They, one team had these really unique aluminum caps on their heads <laughs> to block people from reading their minds. <laughs> um, it was, and the whole thing took about $35 to put on. So it was really un unbelievable and, and wonderful prizes were, were given out. Um, we, we spared no expense on that. Uh, so it was just a fun night and we're going to do it again next season so stay tuned for that uh, we had a Valentine's Day dance on Saturday February 10th the Kelly Broadway Quartet entertained uh, the Bocce Club um, helped out with door and then cleaned up at the end and I really do appreciate that this was the first dance uh, with, with the new time change and people did come in various times which is fine then uh, the contract cost was $1,200. That was for four entertainers. At the door, we took in $202. Is that about 27 guests? And last Saturday, we had our showtime Saturday night. I want to give a shout out to some new people that worked the doors. It was Rick and Tina. And then our Joe Salerno and Lucy and Bonnie helped the doors. Uh, we had Katrina. And if you, the show was very difficult to describe before, but she did a multimedia show involving the screen and video clips. And then she sang to all the video clips. It was a rather small crowd. Um, it was our fourth show time for the season. The contract cost was $1,800. The door, we only took in 715. Mm. Um, 140 people attended, but those that came, remarked about how great the show was. So I thank you all for coming out in the rain to watch a good show. Looking ahead, we have a lot going on this week. Um, Thursday night, 
is our last dessert in the show for the year. And this is a really different show. This is all Trailer Estates Entertainment. We have the Jersey Girls Karaoke, the Fun Singers, and the Jammers. And so they are the entertainment. The admission is a dessert that you bring to share. So if you're going to have dessert, you bring a dessert. Real simple. Um, it was open at 6. Desserts at 6.30. The show begins at 7. So please come out and support your own. It's all, it's all trailer estate. So come out and support your friends for this night. We've never done this before. I'm not sure if we'll ever do it again. Um, but it's just a fun night of just seeing how talented we are here in our community. So on Friday night, we have comedian Mark Klein. Um, this was suggested by somebody sitting right on the, over here uh, last this this year. Mark Klein was at McCurgy's Comedy Club about six months ago, give or take. So he's a top-notch comedian. Doors open at 6, show starts at 7. The Beautification Club is going to be volunteering at that night, so I really appreciate that. We will have lights next, providing it's $5 per person. It's only an hour show, but he really is a great comedian, so please come out. And Saturday, we have a dance. Uh, we only have four left, so this, this is your chance to come out and dance. Music Box Duo will be returning to entertain. Uh, dance begins at 6, is over at 9, and the Yacht Club will be volunteering. Looking ahead, we have a lot of stuff still coming in season. Saturday, March 2nd, Rye Road returns. And if you went to Rye Road last year, the place was packed, but we had to add more tables. So Rye Road is Saturday, March 2nd. Um, the event begins at 6 p.m., Rye Road puts the event on their Facebook post. So we'll have a lot of people coming from the outside that night. Um, and the Canadians are going to be volunteering that night. Then on Thursday, March 7th, the John Rennell Quartet will be here in concert. John Rennell was the vocalist before Ocean is Love and Big Band last year. So if you went to the Big Band night last year, you heard him sing. Um, but he's coming now uh, with a quartet. Uh, we will have dance floor open in some way. We can dance. It's only an hour and a half concert. Now, looking way ahead in March, we have um, a gospel show with the Trailer Estates Trio on March 12th. We have the St. Pat's Dance with Paisley Praise Band. Uh, on March 16th, and then we have the big event of the year, the Sunset Beach Happy Hour on Thursday, March 21st. Um, I need help. I need volunteers to work the John Rennell concert on March 7th, the gospel show on March 12th, the dance on March 16th, and the beach party on March 21st. The beach party, I need lots of people. If you went last year, you know how crowded it was down there. Um, we're going to be changing the food. We're not going to be having people bring food. We're going to be cooking. We're going to be selling food tickets. We're going to have burgers and brats and a full meal. And the beach will be a little bit decorated in a different way. Thanks to our lovely maintenance team. We've been doing a lot of work on this event so far. So we need parking attendants, <laughs> um, people to serve food if and clean up. Yeah. <laughs> so if you worked it last year, please contact me. We need so if you can help out with any of these events, every event that District Rec does requires people to help because it's just us. You know, this is it. We don't have team. We don't have committees. We don't have clubs. This is it. So if you can step up and help, it would be wonderful. And one more thing, next season is planned. Yay. Um, the contracts are in except for two. The entertainers are booked. Either I have a contract or a verbal commitment. If you went to the dance last night that the Beautification Club put on, that band is booked for our Christmas party for next year in December. So if you liked them, that's who's playing. So we will have 
three events a month in December, January, and February and March of next season. It's a drastic reduction, but what we're going to do instead is that we're going to offer better entertainment and more community-wide entertainment. So it's going to be something for everyone next year, including a taco bar and trivia night, a poker run, and a beach party. We have some great concerts planned and a few dances. So, but less clubs and groups have the opportunity to fill in the gaps. If you want to have a dance, a concert, or event, I would be more than happy to share my information with you. So please contact me. This will be posted in the April Tribune, what's going to be happening, because I have all the dates set, all the reservations are done. So that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Don, welcome back. <laughs> <laughs> all right, a lot of the things we've already kind of hit on, uh, the ADA access for the pool is uh, going in. The two lifts that get into the hot tub and the pool are sitting there. They're still waiting on the parts for the uh, lift to get access up to the pool. And then uh, they still have to get the uh, fence and the fob and, and all that stuff put in yet. So that's happening. It, it's working. So be a couple, three weeks, I'm guessing, before, before it's functional. Don't have an exact date. Um, dock repairs, uh, dock repairs are going to be end of next week. They're going to finally get it. So, I mean, they told me that two weeks ago too. So I'm hoping it still happens. So they're going to replace a, a piling, repair that dock, um, get it back in there and get everybody back in their rightful, rightful slips. Uh, speaking of slips, uh, 20 foot slips, anybody has a smaller boat needs a slip. Now's the time. I got a whole bunch of them open. So good, good time to get in the, in the marine. You got your choice of picking slips. Um, let's see here. Uh, the guys are, are working in the activity center, replacing the lights with LED lights and also replacing ceiling tiles. So you'll see a, a lot of work over there. It should get a little brighter in those rooms. Um, then the uh, stage curtains. The stage curtains got installed. Uh, guys still got a little bit of work to do over there. You don't know yet, but they, they look great. So get out soon. That's all I got right now. Great, thank you. Louis? Um, this week, we or last week, the uh, auditors were here. They completed their field work. Thanks to TJ for hustling all the records around and uh, making that as smooth as she can make it. And uh, she's still supplying a little bit of data to them, but uh, the, it's in their hands now. Did they give you a time frame for when they expect to complete the audit? Usually about two weeks. About two weeks. That's what, that's what I was expecting. So that's on. That's uh, getting closer to being behind us. And then, even though several times I've said, "Oh, in a couple of days I'm going to send out the payoff letters for the the seawall assessment," Thursday they will be going for sure. We now have the, the letters completed. They've been uh, formatted, audited, inspected, sworn at. And uh, thanks to Lee, I have to admit, we were having some problems filtering the county mailing list to only reflect the ones that um, need letters for the payoff because so many have been paid off. And uh, we did, we're able to uh, fit the letter into a window envelope. So as soon as those envelopes get here Thursday, they get stuffed and out they go. That's it for me. Great. Thank you. Lori? Hey, um, first off, I changed the wording listed on PP28 Agreement of Responsibility to Renter Resident Form. It used to say Age Verification Form PP29 Required to Obtain FOB and or Renter Card. And I changed the Age Verification Form to Additional Documents Are Required. Um, and I did this because either a PP29 or a PP26 will work to, get, to take care of that. So rather than trying to name them, I just changed it to uh, additional documents. Um, and then uh, I have the reservations um, that have been submitted and uh, processed, um, either uh, called, emailed, or copied, in, and copied and available in the office. Um, please check the website calendar right away to ensure that no errors were made the location, time, grill, kitchen, fobs, et cetera, and then check it again the week prior to ensure no changes had to be made. 
trustees, I'll get your copies back to you sometime this week, but they are on the website. Um, and then now to the clubs, groups, and organizations that have not submitted paperwork, I'm accepting reservations for the May 1st, 2024 through April 30th, 2025 recurring reservations. Remember, you will need to submit a copy of your bylaws and a list of officers or for less formal groups, a PP39 club group purpose contact information form for your group. I must have these before I can process any recurring res room reservations. I, um, I should be on track with the usual one week turnaround for those submitted now. Um, I also have an ask for residents that are submitting reservations. Now that I'm dealing with March of 2024 and possibly March of 2025, I very dearly need you to put the year that your reservation is for on your forms. Mm -hmm. That's it. Okay, thank you. Uh, I just had two items. One I'm going to postpone because that's uh, addressing the uh, TE master plan. As I see it's on the uh, agenda, so I'll skip that one. Uh, I have to dispel a rumor. Uh, I seen it on, I should say, the media that Trailer Estates is up oh. for sale. <laughs> it's I don't know how these damn things get started, but it was just comical. No, it is not up for sale. There is a whole process. We're under the charter through the state, blah, blah, blah. It, so please just disregard it. I don't know how they get started, but enough, enough said. Okay, Mr. Morris. A couple of things. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. The uh, Red Cross uh, smoke detector installation, installation that... Uh, we were trying to get a second uh, shot at will happen uh, sometime in April and we'll get information out in March. The uh, official from the Red Cross uh, has been ill and he expects to be uh, up and around uh, hopefully uh, in the next couple of weeks. The FOB system. Um, we have uh, consulted with our uh, with Big Fish who's doing the installation on our new system. And we have decided to accelerate the uh, ID cards that we had talked about, where you'll have just an ID card that will act as your FOB. So the ID card, it will have the FOB built in, and you'll just swipe the card to get into whatever uh, uh, building that you want to get into. And we'll probably we we'll get the information out, and we'll be very uh, proactive in getting the word out with banners and signs and on our website. Uh, and, uh, but that probably will happen sometime uh, April or May of, uh, of this year. But we wanted to tell you that we're going to, uh, and that will mean that every, the people that uh, will have to get their new cards from the office generally, uh, and the people that aren't here, we're working on getting, uh, figuring out how to get their uh, their cards to them or having them come to the office uh, when they come down. Uh, we had talked about three violations happening quite, quite frequently. I think we have probably, I think there's four properties with three violations. The charge of the enforcement committee, I believe, is to probably meet once a quarter as opposed to when we have uh, you know, enough violations. The violations are like a snapshot. They don't go away. So uh, the next time, I believe that they first met January 16th. So we're looking at uh, possibly a uh, uh, early April mm -hmm. uh, or late March uh, uh, next enforcement meeting uh, for the uh, for the enforcement committee. And uh, that's really all I had, Mr. Chair. Thank Great. You. Thank you. Uh, the violation report, uh, just the items that was already mentioned. Yeah, that was so my bad. I did not realize that when I was gone that you had the, uh, I did not think you guys would get it on the agenda, so I, I stand corrected. <laughs> we we like to wait on you. Obviously. <laughs> okay, and I don't think we have an unfinished business, and so with that, I'll adjourn the workshop at uh, 10, I can't 40. see 29, 1040. 30, 30, yeah, 1040. 1040.
Been... Almost, almost grabbed the wrong camera. <laughs> 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 okay, uh, so I, I'm going to break. No, sure no. Yes. Yes. Please. Okay. If you would, we'll take a five-minute recess. Please shut off your microphones.
Okay, welcome back. Uh, call to order the regular board meeting uh, for February 20th, 2024 at 10.50 a.m. here in Mark's Hall. Uh, could we have the roll call again, please? Sure, Lori Dalton here. Dottie Deerwester. Present. Kathy Gregory. Present. Todd Lombardi. Present. Russell McAllister. Present. Louie Nichols. Present. Cindy O'Brien. Absent. Rod Smith. Present. Dwayne Trotter. Present. E. Morris. Present. Okay, we'll start off uh, with the public comment, and it's uh, open to any item. <laughs> wow. Do we have anybody on Zoom? Do I have anybody on Zoom? Doesn't look like it. I can't wow. without turning around. No. Hearing none, I'll close public comment. We'll jump right into the approval of minutes. So is there a motion to approve the uh, minutes for the February 6, 2024 board meeting workshop? I so move. Second. Are there any corrections to those minutes? I didn't receive any corrections from trustees or, or the park manager. I had none. Uh, all those in favor of approving the minutes as approved. Um, as written. As written, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, please say nay. The minutes are approved. Is there a motion to approve the minutes for the February 6, 2024 regular board meeting? So, so moved. Who's who? So, Todd. 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 Okay. I'll second. Second. Are there any corrections to those minutes? Again, I did not receive any corrections from trustees or, or the park manager. Great. All those in favor of approving the minutes as written, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, please say nay. Those minutes are approved. Could we have the treasurer's report? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Current balance of the Regions Bank business checking account, $84,550.65. And the balance of the uh, Regions Money Market account, Two million one hundred twenty three five hundred fifty three dollars and twenty nine cents, and within that amount are the uh, seawall loan uh, proceeds one hundred seventy five excuse me one hundred seventy six thousand one hundred twenty nine dollars fifty three cents from the Trailer Estates Fire Control District two hundred seventy one thousand three hundred fifty dollars and twenty cents. Uh, special assessment fund twenty six thousand three hundred fifty eight dollars and seventy seven cents. Then our operating uh, funds and reserves one million six hundred forty nine thousand seven hundred fourteen dollars and seventy nine cents. Do I have a motion to approve the treasurer's report? So move. Is there a second? Second. second. Who second? Kathy. Any discussion? All those in favor of approving the Treasury report is read, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, please say nay. Treasury report is approved. Do we have any uh, bills? No, sir. Okay, jumping right into the agenda items. The first item we have is the 2024 25 budget discussion. Uh, I'm sorry, to discuss the capital outlay items. Lou? Hold it. No. Not you added really. that? I added that, huh? Well, I guess the first one I have here is the Trailer Estates Master Planning and uh, Planning Submissions. Yeah, that is mine. And I'd like to make a motion to... No. <laughs> okay. Mine's, They're out of order. mine's out of order. Damn it. Yep. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to accept the quote from the Shore Interior Solutions. And no, no, that's no, a wrong no. one, too. These are really out. If you want to read just between the quotation marks, that should be. That should... Yeah. But we're doing the master plan. It just that my, my whole agenda package is out. Okay. Yep. okay. Uh, make a motion to accept and place on file for further review by the park manager. I'll second that. Put what on? Okay. Which what what are what? we on? What what I'm going to do is uh, the, the two proposals that we have received uh, to review those and to go any farther, mm -hmm. uh, it needs to be voted by the board to 
take a look at that and, and approve the thing. Yes. But in addition to that, I'd like to have Mr. Morris go through like he's already did in his presentation is to vet each one of the proposals and then have that on the website if it's not already there. Yeah, so the rest of the residents can see that, but it does need to be, had to be discussed mm -hmm. here is, and also approved to even go further with the uh, proposals. Mr. Chair, may I? So in essence, what I've asked you to do is to receive these, place these two proposals on file. Gives me the opportunity to start to vet them and return back to the board with uh, um, a schedule of possibly presentations from the uh, two uh, proposal submittal vendors to the board and the uh, then uh, and then a, a process of, of, of discussion and then uh, possibly in a few months uh, putting this to a vote for accepting or uh, uh, awarding the master planning to one of these two groups if uh, you so desire. But the first process or the first steps is to we put it into place it on file so that the public is able to see it and our residents are able to see it because it's now online and uh, both proposals. And now we'll start to uh, talk to uh, the uh, vendors and see what their schedules like to. Uh, we'd like to get them in here to make a presentation to them. And are we positive about the amount of money that um, either one of these proposals is going to charge us to do anything? Well, that's what yes. the proposal. Yes, the, okay. the, the, there's no. I don't believe there's negotiation. Uh, oh, there's set fees. Well, there's there there's set fees at seventy thousand, and the other one I think came 80, in at eighty thousand. Yeah. But again, that has to be approved by the board to even Correct. start that whole so there's process. There's a caveat in there too. I think on them, the, depending on what they do too, it could be more. There's some ad uh, uh, additional items that can be added, but I don't believe there's any negotiation. Again. You're not selecting uh, somebody. You're not putting yourself on the hook for seventy or eighty thousand dollars. This is just the first step mm -hmm. to start to vet them. Um, and uh, we we need to do some background uh, uh, investigation to see if other people have been satisfied with their uh, with their services. So this this is all got to be presented to the board. So this would come back to a workshop. Yes. Correct. Yeah. Or three, possibly many workshops. Yeah, right, probably more than one. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Do I have a second? You had a second. Oh, I did. Yeah, I seconded it. And okay. Then we had a discussion. Now we vote. All those in favor of approving the motion as read, please say aye. 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 <clears throat> those opposed, please say nay. The motion is approved. Now, if I can get this straight again. What's the next one we have? Uh, the office assistant. Yeah, Mr. Morris. Um, I am not able to no, make a motion no, on this. I, I will read that for you. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to adjust the current office assistant, Kristen Olson, from $22 an hour to $24.50 an hour. I'll second it. Any discussion? When will this take place? Uh, next, 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 pay paper, yeah. next, next pay period. period. All those in favor of approving the motion is read. Please say aye. 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 Those opposed, please say nay. The motion is passed. And the Marina Dock resurface um, and rebuild that it's mine. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to accept the quote from Shore Interior Solutions in the amount of twenty-two thousand five hundred to install the new docking, uh, docking, decking on our docks. I'll second that. Any discussion? Don't you need and to increase I'm, that that's, amount? Yeah. That's where okay. I'm headed. <clears throat> I'd like to amend my uh, motion to read uh, to accept. The quote from Shore Interior Solution, the amount of twenty, not to exceed twenty-seven thousand uh, dollars, to install the new decking on our docks. Twenty-seven thousand, you said. Yeah, not to exceed twenty-seven thousand. Are we in discussion? I'll I'll, I'll I'll second that amendment. Okay. Any discussion? 
What would the additional cost be potentially? Approximately four thousand dollars to put. Right. So basically, you got to buy more Trex decking and the clips to hold it down. Yeah, well, so that's our expense. That's the yeah. state's expense. Yeah, this is all this trailer is, expense. State's so expense. this wouldn't be this and, wouldn't be an expense from Shore Solutions. That would be part of Trailer State's capital outlay. It's all included. We're going to have to pay some dollars to buy materials and pay him to do it. It's all trailer oh, state. I see what she's saying. Yeah. You're, saying yeah. but it's not, you're not going to buy it from Shore. The motion. The right. motion was to accept Shore Interior it's, Solutions right. quote. And yep. the project not to exceed twenty seven thousand dollars. Right. Oh, I didn't. So hear, it's I didn't, hear, I didn't hear that. Yeah. I didn't hear that way. So yeah, it will cost the project. Okay. I, I think you need to reread that motion to say that because no one heard it. Okay. So it's a, to to accept their bid and increase the overall project cost. It's twenty seven thousand five hundred. Is that mm -hmm. sound right? Okay. Should I reread it? I make Just, a motion to accept. The quote from Shore Interior Solutions in the amount of twenty-two thousand to install the new decking on our docks and to increase the price not to exceed twenty-seven thousand. To increase the total the project, total, the total. Oh, sorry, the total project, total project, total project, total project, which to me is the TE portion uh -huh. and their portion. Yeah. Total project cost. Uh -huh. You can't. You said twenty-two thousand, not twenty-two thousand five hundred. Not an issue. Uh, the five hundred just the twenty five hundred. No, 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 no. twenty five hundred. Five is them. It oh. could have been twenty two thousand five hundred to install the new decking on our docks and increase the total project cost Plus, not, not to exceed twenty seven thousand. <laughs> I think I got it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor of approving the uh, motion as amended, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say nay. Good job. <laughs> okay. Do we have any further uh, trustee staff or final comments? There was a note I had here about capital outlay with something added to the agenda. No, that was my mistake. My oh, my no, not on there. Okay. my agenda was wrong. I, I have a quick question. Now that we've done our new charting and everything, is this the way it's going to appear and stay? Yeah, that was approved last last meeting. Okay. The organizational chart. Well, you were going back to redo it. I, I, did we actually? We looked at this and approved it. We we approved it with the changes that were oh, okay. yeah, that well, we noted, yeah, yeah, noted in the workshop okay. and it's already in the should yeah. already be in so the these result. changes are the ones you went back and did and that's yeah. okay. Yeah, that's all done. If there's no final comments, uh, I don't think we have any unfinished business. So with that, I'll adjourn the uh, board meeting at eleven oh three. We're making we're making records. Please turn off your microphones. <clears throat>